Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In this video, I'm going to show you some simple security measures you can take to protect your Microsoft Access databases. Today's question comes from Ruben from Toronto, Canada, one of my Platinum members. Ruben says, I trust my employees. I have a small five-person family-run business. I'm not worried about someone intentionally sabotaging my database. However, I'd like to secure it just enough to keep people from seeing things they shouldn't, like financial data or sensitive customer info, things like credit card numbers, that kind of stuff. Once that information's entered into the database, you don't really need anybody else looking it up. Plus, I wouldn't want someone accidentally breaking something. Any tips you can give? I know you have a whole security seminar, but I don't need Fort Knox here. And that's perfectly understandable, Ruben. I do have a security seminar where I cover how to lock down access completely, the most secure you can possibly make it. That does involve a lot of programming, and it's a little complicated, but I show you step by step. However, as long as you're not worried about anybody intentionally messing things up, and you just want to keep people from breaking stuff, like you said, or, or maybe seeing some, some sensitive information, credit limits, and stuff like that, there are a few steps that I can show you to protect your database good enough for the average workplace. Here are my top simple security tips. First, we're going to hide any sensitive tables. We're going to hide the navigation pane so they can't go poking around. They have to follow your form menus that you make for them. We'll disable the full ribbon. That turns off some options you might not want them having. And then we're going to encrypt the database to an ACCDE file. That'll protect them from making any design changes or getting into your VBA code or your form design. Okay, so here's my customer template. This is part of the blank customer template that I have available on my website. You can download it for free. I'll put a link down below the video. But let's pretend this is your company database. Let's open it up. Real simple, very basic. We have a main menu, and you want to control how the users interact with your database using these kinds of menus like this. I'm not a big fan of the switchboards. I like making my own menus using blank forms that have no data in them. We've got a simple customer list, a customer form, and of course you'd have other things in here like order entry and contacts and all that kind of stuff. And maybe an admin menu just for you, okay? I cover how to set these up in my beginner classes. Access beginner level 7, in fact, is where I cover making a main menu form. Now in my customer data, if you look at the customer T here, I've got all the basic information, right? Address, city, state, all that stuff. Now the credit limit's in here, and you might even have a field in here to store their credit card number and their expiration date, especially if you have recurring memberships. Now what I suggest you do is put sensitive information like that in a separate table. So for example, let's create table design. Okay, and in here we would have an ID for this table. And then we'd have a customer ID to link it back to the customer table. This is called a foreign key. We'll make a one-to-one -one relationship here, or a one-to-many if you want to store multiple credit card numbers. That's fine too. I've got tons of free videos on relationships on my website and on YouTube. I'll put some links down below. Watch those first if you don't know how to make relationships. It's not really relevant for this particular example, but I like to show you how to do it. And then in here you'd have the credit card number. I'll just put CCN and the expiration date like that. And maybe the, the CCV code and whatever, whatever else you need. Billing address. Save this as my credit card table. Okay. And now you can set up a one-to-one -one relationship or a one-to-many relationship. You could put a subform on here with the credit card information, whatever you want to do. But the point of this lesson is to show you how to hide this from prying eyes. Let's say you're the only one that handles customer billing. Nobody else in the office needs to see credit card numbers. All right, you put it in, you make all the charges, and you're the only one that can look this stuff up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hide this table. Right-click, Table Properties, Hidden, and then hit OK. And notice now it disappears. That table's still there, but it's hidden. Right? You can't just browse to it. In case someone does get into your navigation pane, which I'm going to show you how to turn off in just a minute, they won't see it there. Okay? And of course, you want to hide any queries or forms that are also based on that. Now, how can you go in there and find it? Well, right-click anywhere in the navigation pane and go to Navigation Options and turn on Show Hidden Objects. Now, this is on the system level. This is not for the database. This won't affect anybody else if they have this database on their computers and just, you know, you're using a multi 
computer setup on your network, for example. This only will work on your computer. Everybody else won't see them. Hit OK, and there it is. You can see it's kind of grayed out there. But now you can open this up and come in here and work with it. Generally, you'll have a form that you'll be working with. So the table and the form, you'll make them both hidden. And then you'll just have to open up the form. So that's the first step. Someone would have to know to come in here to turn navigation options on and then show hidden objects. Usually, most access users don't know that, especially if they're not access developers. They're just using your database. Okay? So that's step one. Step two is hiding this navigation pane altogether. Now, you can minimize it. All right, that, that's what I do when I'm working with the database because I still want to be able to get in here, but I don't want to have to see it, so I minimize it. But let's hide it all together. To do that, we're going to go to File, and then Options, and then Current Database. So this is on the database level. This is affecting the database file itself. So you'll do this to the front end file that you're going to put on their computers. All right, all these changes affect the current database file. So slide down here. And then Display Navigation Pane, turn that off. All right, that will hide the navigation pane. Now, this is kind of confusing because navigation options are right here. This, and I double checked this just a minute ago. I copied this database file to my other computer just to make sure. This navigation options is for your computer. Okay, so if you turn this on or off, this affects your computer. It shouldn't be under current database. All right, access guys, change that. This is confusing in here. All right, so I'm going to cancel that. This here is for the database file. All right, sorry if that's confusing. I didn't make it that way. This is like saying, here, here's a shortcut to open up this other option. Okay, so you can do that. The next thing is right down here. Allow full menus. Okay, this turns off all of the options on the ribbon, including going to design view, which they won't be able to do in a minute anyways once we encrypt the database. But it gives them a limited set of options on the ribbon. All right, sorting and filtering and things like that. You can also turn off default shortcut menus. I don't usually go that far. That's when you right click on something and it gives you that pop up shortcut menu. You could turn that off too. All right, I'll just show you how it works, but I don't usually do that, but you can. And yes, you can create your own custom ribbon. That's another class altogether. I won't talk about that today, but you can set up your own ribbons too. All right, hit OK now. Now this time you will definitely have to close and reopen the database, so shut it down. Open it up. And now when it opens up, look, you're in a much better place secure-wise, okay? They have a very limited set of menu options, and there's no navigation pane over here, so they can't go poking around. They have to use your form menus, okay? And if they right-click, I'm right-clicking now, you don't get any menus in here, so you can't right-click and go to design view here either, okay? Now, one thing I do have to mention at this level is it is possible to bypass all of those startup options. Let me close the database down. If you hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then double click on this file, when access loads up, it bypasses all of your start options and your start menu and an auto exec macro if you have one of those. So all those options that we just set are null and void if the user knows access and they know enough to hold down the shift key when they start the database. Again, this is good enough security for the average user in your workplace that you trust. In my security seminar, I do show you how to disable the bypass key. So they cannot do that. However, that involves a little bit of programming, so I'm not gonna cover that today, but if you do want to know how to do that, I cover it in the security seminar. But for the normal user, if you close that, all right, if you open it up, like you give them the shortcut on their desktop to do their work for the day, this is all they got. Okay, they can do refreshing, they can do some finding, Okay, that's it. Also keep in mind, you will have to buy, use the bypass key, right? Hold the shift key down, double click to get into your secret stuff. Okay, now the last step is to encrypt the database. What does that mean? Well, that means just taking this database file and removing all design access to it. It, it, it encrypts it, it compiles it in the machine code basically, so there's no VB code that they can access and they can't get into design view of any of the queries, reports, forms, modules, or macros. They can see the tables though. So encrypting the database does not hide the tables. I'm assuming that you have, if you're in a multi-user network situation, I'm assuming you have your tables in a split database on the back end on a server somewhere, which is how you should have it set up. 
Again, I've got videos on that on my website and on YouTube on how to split your database. I'll put some links down below. If you're not sure what that is, that video will explain it for you. Now, how do we encrypt this? It's real easy. File, Save As, Make ACCDE, that's Access Database Encrypted, all right, or an executable only, but it basically stands for encrypted. Yeah, I just Googled it. I looked it up. It is execute only is what Microsoft has it listed as. So hit Save As, hit Save. Now close your database. And now you should have two copies of your database. Keep this guy around, your ACCDB. If you want to make design changes in the future, you'll need to use this. And in fact, this is the file that you can use to work with as well on your computer. This is the guy you're going to give everybody else, the encrypted or the execute only file. I've always called it an encrypted file, so it's a bad habit. All right, so let's open this guy up now. And you can see there it is. All right, now I turned off all of the you know, the, the navigation pane and the right-click menus, but let's use the bypass key on this one and see what we can get into. I'm going to hold the shift key down, double-click. Even if I bypass your startup options, I still can't come in here and go to design view on any of these forms. Yeah, you can still see the tables in here. That's, that's something that you really can't get around with Microsoft Access. The only way you can really super secure tables like that is to use SQL Server or another database server program. In the security seminar, I show you different ways you can kind of hide the tables better. Okay, You could also simply not link to these. If you have a linked database where you are the only one that has access to the credit card information, just put those in a separate database file and don't link to them for the other tables, All right, for the other databases. Okay, But also now I can't create stuff too. I can't create forms. All right, I can't create reports. I can't create any new modules. You can create queries and tables, okay? But the encrypted executable only file will prevent people from going in here and messing with your design. See, can't, okay? So those are my quick top four simple ideas to secure your database when you're not worried about someone intentionally damaging your database. Okay, you just don't want people going in there and poking around and seeing stuff they're not supposed to see. These four things should get you by. Like I said, I do have a full security seminar that shows you how to lock everything down on your database. You can set up a user logon form, put people in different groups, track which users do what in the database, auditing their actions, set up a system log table. Show or hide different buttons on your menus depending on who's logged on, like people can't normally see the admin button. And lots of other goodies like locking down that bypass key. Uh, I'll put a link to the security seminar down below the video. If you have any questions about it, let me know. Want to learn more about simple security? Well, in the extended cut video, I cover how to password protect buttons. All right, it's a couple lines of code, a little bit of tiny bit of programming, but it's not hard. I'll show you how to use an input box to prompt the user for a password. So you can set up your own form that's got all the things on it that you want. And then if the user tries to click on that button, they'll be asked for a password. Okay? That in conjunction with the other stuff that I just showed you is good enough to make it so that your menuing system is also protected from people who are just, you know, clicking around to see what they can click on. Plus, I'll show you a couple more enhancements. Like, you're going to want to keep using the ACCDB file that you made for yourself. So, here's some nice little things. I'll show you how to minimize the ribbon on startup. It just snaps it shut. It right, gets it out of your way. I like to do that for myself. Minimize the navigation pane. You want to leave the navigation pane open for you while you're developing, but it's nice to just have it so when your database starts up, it snaps shut. All right, so there's a couple lines of code to do that too. And then I'll show you how to maximize access on startup, the whole application. That's handy for you. Me per particularly, I have some pretty big forms. Okay, So I like to have it so when I open up my database, the whole thing just maximizes to the full screen. And that's good for your users too. Because if they're just only working with access, you can have it maximized when it starts up, and then they don't have to worry about seeing anything else, any other distractions on their, their desktop. So that's in the extended cut for members, silver members and up. Get full access to all of my extended cut videos. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.